Now that you have downloaded Anaconda and know how to access Jupyter Notebook, let's do a quick tour of Jupyter. As a server client application, the Jupyter Notebook app allows you to edit and run your notebook via a web browser. The application can be executed on a PC without internet access. Its two main components are the kernels and a dashboard. A kernel is a program that runs and examines the user's code. The Jupyter Notebook app has a kernel for Python, but there are also kernels available for other programming languages. The dashboard of the application not only shows you and allows you to reopen the notebook documents that you have made, but can also be used to manage the kernels. Under the running tab, you can see which ones are running and shut them down if necessary. The cluster option allows you to perform parallel processing operations. You can upload a notebook into the directory. You can also make folders to keep all your documents organized together. Just press the folder option that appears when you press the new button in your initial menu and a new folder will appear in your overview. You can rename the folder instantly as it will appear as a folder with the name untitled folder. Finally, you can expand the new button and can create a new Python 3 notebook file. Let's carry on a few operations. I'll create a new folder and will rename this folder to fin520. Now I will create a new Python notebook file by expanding the new button and selecting Python 3. The browser immediately opens a new tab for me. Here you will write your code and see its output. The field you see here is called a cell. You can access a cell by pressing enter and you can start typing your code. The gray box is called the input field. The green cell border and the little pencil on the top right corner indicate that you are in edit mode. If you press the escape button on your keyboard, you can go back to the command mode. The cursor and the pencil disappears and the cell border turns back to gray and its left margin is blue now. Let's say X is a list composed of four numbers, six, seven, eight, and nine. After that, I can ask the computer to print this list for me by typing X. To do that, you can press the run button or select any of the option under the cell tab in the menu. I can also execute these commands using keyboard shortcuts in two ways. The first one is to hold control, then press enter. By doing that, the machine will execute the code in the cell. Observe that an output field with the same numbers as the input field appears. The output represents the machine's response to my commands. The second option allows for a more fluid code writing. Hold shift, then press enter. The previous two commands will be executed and then a new cell where you can write the next line of code is created. Let's look at other menu items. You can cut, copy and paste cells by using these buttons on the main menu. Or you can use the following keyboard shortcuts. Select the cell then press the X key on the keyboard to cut a cell. Or C to copy a cell. And then you can press the V key on the keyboard to paste the cut or copied cell. You can always use the arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate along your notebook file. The arrow buttons in the menu allows you to move a selected cell up or down. Observe that the corresponding output field moves along with your input cell. When you work with more complex code that requires tougher calculations, the process might take too long to complete. So to stop it, you can click on this classic stop button in the menu or you can also do that by selecting the interrupt option under the kernel tab in the menu. The other keyboard shortcuts are as follows. Press A to insert a new empty cell above the selected cell or B to insert a new empty cell below the selected cell. You can also select the insert option in the menu to add new cells. Press D twice to delete the selected cell. Most of the above options are available under the edit tab in the menu. All the cells we saw thus far were the code cells. Let's now explore what is a markdown cell. It is a cell that contains strictly documentation text not to be executed as a code. When your code becomes longer, markdown cells turn out to be very useful as they allow you to leave comments and explain the solution you have created. Finally, once we are done creating our code, we can download this file in several different formats to share with other programmers using the download as option under the file menu item. This was long but an important lesson. We went through everything you need to know before you start coding from the next section onwards.